So again, thanks for joining us for this presentation and our overview of Bold Connect. So in today's session, we're going to be covering impact why IoT predictive maintenance has on manufacturing and production quality. So um, for those who don't know, Bold Connect uses artificial intelligence and smart sensors to improve operational efficiency, minimize costs, and extend the life cycle of machinery equipment. So Sam, do you mind moving to the next slide? All right. So my name is Olivia Johnston. I am a strategic sales executive here at AlphaBold. I'm primarily responsible for managing our uh, customers and our uh, partnerships with both Microsoft um, and any other vendors that we work with. And also, I am joined by Tayeb Ali, who is our VP of Consulting Services here. And then I'd also like to introduce Dan Khan, who oversees our AI and IoT practice, and who I actually like to refer to as kind of the mastermind uh, behind AlphaBold AI, to really drive Bold Connect in terms of architecting it and perfecting it. So I'm really excited to have him on here today. And we'll go ahead and jump to the next slide. I just want to quickly go over an agenda for today. So what we'll be going over is the vision that we have uh, in terms of the industry and our solution. Uh, specifically, we'll get into Bold Connect and the capabilities of the sensor that we have. Uh, then we'll get into some specific IoT use cases uh, for manufacturing. Uh, then Sam's, Sam's going to go over the cloud solution of this and then the native solution. He'll jump into a demo and then we'll wrap this up with Q&A. And any questions that you have, please put them in the chat box. I will be monitoring it the entire time. And we'll make sure we address those at the end if I can address them uh, throughout the presentation. Also, if there's any questions that require follow-up, I will make sure I connect with you after this. All right, Sam, next slide, please. OK, so I want to go over uh, an interesting statistic that we found. So according to Gartner's quadrant for uh, II platforms in 2019, uh, they anticipate that between now and 2023, 30% of industrial enterprises will have full on-premise deployments of IoT platforms, um, which is an increase of 15% from this year. Um, I know that there's a lot of bigger companies that are really taking on um, this digital transformation um, with IoT, and uh, the capabilities are, are pretty extensive. I know for us specifically, we, we do incorporate AI into our platform as well, so we'll be touching on that. Um, and then what I'll do now is I'm going to hand it over to Sam. Um, but again, please ask any questions that you have. I also included a brochure of our solution um, in this presentation, so you can reference that afterwards, too. All right, Sam, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Olivia. I, I thank you, everyone, for joining in. Uh, my name is Sam Khan, and I happen to be the practice manager for AI and IoT here at Alpha Board. Uh, uh, we're going to be discussing, this is uh, basically the roadmap for the whole um, uh, webinar. We're going to start off with the vision. So uh, this uh, graphic uh, that I'm showing here actually uh, uh, depicts the whole vision that we have for our solution. And it starts with the sensor right at the bottom, sensor layer, all the way up to the consumer or the customer of this application and, and everything in between. So uh, as is part of our uh, uh, talking devices initiative, and the idea is to build such capabilities where we can enable the devices to send telemetries and the insights uh, which are going to be ingested in the solution and the, the, that information is then going to be processed uh, into the business applications so that they can be used by the by the customers of the application itself. So when I say that you know we cover pretty much everything here, that actually means that we cover the full spectrum uh, life cycle here with oh, the whole 360 degrees. Now if I were to uh, delve into a little bit of details here, so the whole thing actually starts with the IoT devices that are deployed, let's suppose, in a manufacturing facility. And those devices can actually be plugged on top of, uh, let's say, an inductive motor. And you know, then these devices will start disseminating information, which in the IoT parlance um, is known as a telemetry. These telemetries are then sent to the processing layer above. Now, there could be a possibility where you might already have uh, a sensor application running for operational purposes. 
then in this situation, we'll be working uh, with our prospective customers to build integrations into this application and get the required information into the processing layer. Now, the processing layer is, is where the, uh, the actual magic happens. It includes, it's composed of integration services. When I say integration, I uh, tend to imply that, you know, the integration between the sensor, uh, the operational sensor applications, if there are any deployed, and also the integration uh, between the processing layer as well as the business applications layer. Aside to the integration services, we do have the business analytics services available as part of the processing layer as well. That, that is an area where we tend to process the telemetry information and, uh, and drive and, and, and process key business indicators uh, or key process uh, indicators from, uh, from this component. And uh, aside to that, we have uh, the data processing services as well, because when you have the data coming in to the processing layer over a period of time, this becomes a big data challenge. So you need to deploy solutions that can process such a uh, big load of information. And when you have the, uh, when you're dealing with such big information, it's imperative that you uh, tend to build some autonomous services into the platform also. Because as Olivia, Olivia was mentioning earlier, we are actually at the cusp of um, the IIoT boom here, where you know it's implied that there are going to be a, a lot many devices being deployed uh, for, uh, specifically for IIoT use cases as well. So in, in such situations, when you have a lot of uh, devices deployed, you're talking about a lot of data that is going to be exchanged. So in such situations, it becomes uh, tedious and in, in, in on occasions unpractical uh, for humans to be managing uh, such uh, facilities and services manually. So you need to build autonomous services and that is where IoT actually joins uh, in with the AI services. So the AI services are also part of this processing layer. And another very important aspect is the security. So we just want to ensure that all the device communication and the control mechanism remain secure and only authorized personnel should be able to control uh, the, the features of the, of the solution. Going up uh, a layer, this processing layer then bleeds into the business application layer. That is where we integrate uh, the, uh, the information process in the processing layer with the business applications. Uh, some of the most popular ones are like Salesforce, Dynamics 365, which is the Microsoft offering, also NetSuite, ERP, SAP, and any homegrown business application layer as well. Now, this layer actually becomes an interface to the customers of this solution. So we have so far identified three di uh, different roles here. One is a support engineer. Uh, this role is responsible for maintaining, uh, uh, you know, the uh, optimal control in, uh, of the uh, plant facility or the manufacturing facility. This person has the responsibility of ensuring that the, the, the lights are, are turned on at all the times and there are no breakdowns uh, uh, during the uh, operations functions. So this person needs to be able to see the insights coming in from, uh, from the devices directly. Uh, then in, in cases where uh, there are imminent breakdowns uh, or there are certain issues that, that might occur or if let's suppose if you have any, any rules configured into the solution which can you know be trapped and could, could also lead to the fact that the temperature of let's say a specific device or, uh, or, or a motor is exceeding a certain threshold value then you know something is up. So that person has to be notified that event needs to be trapped and, and, and a case needs to be created should be assigned to the field service staff so that he can go on site and, and uh, does the repair work. Aside to those two roles, we have the owner of the manufacturing facility or the business analysis teams. So these guys are uh, these guys are responsible for maintaining uh, or basically overseeing the optimal uh, operations of their manufacturing facility. They need to uh, see exactly how much power is being consumed, for example, uh, or how much power is actually being drawn by the equipment that is running in the plant, and if there are any any losses there. Because I mean, there could be possibilities where you can have your equipment running. Uh, and not breaking down, but they might as well not be uh, running in an optimal capacity. So, so in such situations, there could be power that is being lost or dissipated that can actually translate into losses. So, such kind of business indicators are the insights that uh, such uh, personnel are, are uh, interested in uh, looking into. So, uh, the so if you if I were to encapsulate this whole solution, this is primarily uh, solution focused, not device focused. So. Our, we specialize uh, in, in, in envisioning value-added solutions and in, in implementing value-added solutions for our schemes 
Steam customers. But you know, the, as far as the device manufacturing is concerned, uh, so we can actually help uh, research and, and work with the, uh, with our customers and trying to come up with you know uh, ways and means about in you know implementing solutions to the problems, and we can actually perform. Uh, research on the available sensors, we can help them, uh, you know, prototype some of the scenarios, we can help on the PCB designs. And, but the focus always remains on the solution side of it, not on the manufacturing side of it. So as, when, when we actually get to a stage where the PMCs uh, are deemed successful, then we actually work with our contractor partners in, in ensuring that, you know, the devices, the actual devices are actually shipped and manufactured and, and, and provided uh, to uh, our, our customers. Moving on. So here are some of the examples here. So when I, when I was uh, talking about telemetry earlier, there, I mean, here are some of the examples of the telemetry information uh, that could be of use uh, in the industrial use cases. So you know, if you uh, if if I were to start with location tracking, so if you have use cases in supply chain where the goods are in transit, then you know. Uh, Tracking the location of the goods at uh, different intervals becomes uh, important. So such uh, location telemetry uh, can be one example uh, that we can ingest into our uh, whole connect solution. Then there are use cases regarding RFID scanning, barcode scanning, especially in inventory uh, related use cases for checking uh, in the inventory and checking out the, the goods. Uh, other Types of telemetries could be the temperature readings, vibration readings, current readings. By the way, uh, the demo that I'm, I'm going to be focusing on in this webinar actually is, uh, you know, is, is built on top of the telemetries uh, re related to uh, temperature, vibration, and current. And there could be possibilities where, you know, uh, your use case might not be revolving around information regarding these readings, but you know, uh, it could be pressure readings also in HVAC uh, type of uh, industry vertical. And uh, there could be IR or optical sensors being deployed also. And if, if you if you have lock-in and lock-in type of scenarios, if you want to see whether the, uh, the containers were open or closed, and such type of information can also be ingested into mold grenade. Uh, moving on. OK, now uh, comes the turn of the um, actual use case uh, that we are going to be discussing in detail. Uh, this use case relates to predictive maintenance and power consumption and outputs. So uh, actually there are two use cases which are related to each other as well. So um, primarily there are uh, two types of uh, maintenance. Uh, one is scheduled maintenance, the other one is predictive maintenance and schedule. So the, the whole idea is to make sure that the industrial equipment is running in optimal capacity and whenever the repair work that needs to be performed is performed. So um, these days, uh, the focus is actually uh, more on um, the scheduled maintenance aspect of it because you, you just need to make sure that you know nothing breaks down. But that actually means that you have to perform scheduled maintenance cycles where the personnel, uh, uh, the support person, can can come and visit and look at the equipment and then they you know uh, take their readings and then they go back and come up with a report that that is shared with the business and the technical teams. But uh, now that we have AI, which is becoming operational um, on a daily basis, the challenge and the idea is to uh, make sure that you know, those, um, uh, you know, the information that is being uh, taken in from the sensors is actually processed and we can actually learn from that information and, and the idea is to ensure that you can actually predict the imminent breakdown of the industrial equipment or the motors or anything of that sort that you have deployed in the manufacturing facility. So an example, I mean, if you were to look at this graphic here on the left hand side, so if uh, let's say you take an example that you have a motor that is freshly installed, then the assumption is that this uh, piece of equipment actually has uh, the maximum lifestyle, uh, life, uh, uh, maximum life available. And over, and when you put that into operation, over the period of time, the, the signs of variance they start to appear. Now that could be because of the friction in the bearings, there could be loosening of the belt or anything of that sort, but over a period of time those the the motor, the performance of the, the equipment deteriorates till the point, till comes a time when you know it actually breaks down. So just beforehand, if you are able to uh, get gain the insights into the machine's life cycle by way of deploying the IoT sensors, you should be able to plan uh, 
they repair work ahead of time so that you know you can you can uh, prevent the imminent breakdowns now if you want to see the graphic on the right hand side this is a power uh, consumption analytics uh, example now so if if the if the equipment starts developing signs of weariness it's not completely broken down at this time but it's not i mean the current that it's drawing or the power that it's consuming uh, may not be used optimally and most of that is actually uh, being lost so that loss actually translated to uh, finance actually has implication on the overall finances as well so if we uh, if we so the idea is to build that capability within the solution so so that you you can actually gain near real time insights into uh, the functioning of the whole manufacturing facility So some of the key objectives uh, that uh, that we tend to uh, achieve uh, after the deployment of the solution are are these. So first off, your as as is quite obvious is is to gain better monitoring into the functioning of the manufacturing facility, the operations. Uh, and a related objective is the uh, is is basically of the uh, is is better machine efficiency. So that you know, if if you already know that it's it's performing suboptimally, then there's something wrong, and it either has to be replaced or you know it has to be fixed. And that actually builds into the uh, core objective of reducing the downtime. Uh, another key uh, aspect uh, of this uh, the deployment of the solution is to achieve the service automation. So if 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 the repair work has to be performed or if the machinery has to be replaced, somebody has to be notified of that. And and most of in most cases, those are like third party vendors. So our solution actually integrates with the business applications such as Dynamics and uh, NetSuite, where you can actually assign support uh, work orders or, or support cases to the uh, to the support personnel, so that they can uh, once assigned the case, they can actually go to the manufacturing facility and, and you know do their job. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, also. Uh, you know, since we are also focusing more on the power consumption analytics and and, and also the indicators regarding the losses as well as the performance of the equipment, it also helps in maintaining the uh, the cost of uh, running the whole operation as well. Moving on to the solution. Okay, so we have uh, come up with the first release of the solution. It actually is available in two deployments. Uh, one is a cloud solution, the other one is a native solution. Uh, this is the, if you were to see the graphic here, this actually uh, describes the whole architecture here. So as I was mentioning earlier, uh, the information is being disseminated. Mean, so the whole story starts from a manufacturing system. So that is where you actually deploy your IP devices and the sensors. Once the sensors are in, they start disseminating information that that information has to be trapped or that has to be throttled and controlled through uh, the device gateway. This whole architecture is based on the uh, services um, and um, the capabilities available in Microsoft's Azure platform. So they do have a platform service available which is known as uh, IoT Hub that helps in the remote management of the IoT devices. And when I say remote management, I am actually implying the whole life cycle here. That includes the uh, registration of the new devices um, and retirement of the devices, um, making sure that the uh, communication protocol is established and it's secure, and also establishing communication from device device to cloud and from cloud to device, uh, and also the capability of updating the firmware on, on, over the air. So once you have the communication established, uh, this information is then sent to uh, data streaming services. Um, you can actually deploy Apache Spark or Microsoft Azure already has a platform service available for such purposes which is known as stream, uh, stream analytics. Now, when the information reaches here, this or the, you already have the data to, to build value-added service on top of. So this uh, data streaming service becomes a multiplexer of, so, uh, multiplexer of sorts. So this can uh, this uh, service actually bounces the or relays that information into one of the platform services, which is known as Time Series Insights. This service actually helps in uh, providing analytics of time series analytics, uh, and th those can actually be used in a front-end application that can be con that can be consumed or can be used by the operation staff on the ground. But this information again is is time series information. 
going uh, back into the streaming uh, multiplexer, it can also relay information to data storage services such as uh, Azure SQL or Azure Data Lake. Now, this data then you know that is being pushed to the storage uh, can be used uh, by the uh, BI dashboards um, that that we have developed uh, to to process the information and also uh, you know uh, come up with reports that can be consumed by the management. Those are basically business-related information that is shown to in an interactive manner to the to the management. Coming back in, uh, and by the, uh, just another key uh, aspect in this architecture is the machine learning uh, aspect. So we, over a period of time, when you start uh, developing a critical mass of the time series data here, you can use that information to start training your uh, machine learning models. So once your machine learning models are trained to the desired level of accuracy, they can actually be deployed uh, to production also. So the stream service can actually uh, call the deployed ML model um, in near real time and gain the insights from the data that is coming on the wire. Um, and uh, another uh, important aspect of this solution uh, is the capability of uh, trapping events. For, for example, if you already have rules configured into the solution regarding the temperature values or the current values exceeding a certain threshold value, and if that does not, uh, and if, if it's an indication of an imminent breakdown, then in such situations, those events are then trapped. And by way of the integration services, we actually create uh, case logs and work orders into business applications like Dynamic CNN and NetSuite ERP or SAP or any other homegrown application. Those uh, uh, events are then you know, used to create work orders that are assigned to the maintenance vendors or the field service uh, staff. And once uh, they are being assigned a task, they can then go and perform the actual repair work on site. So this, in a nutshell, uh, is, 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 is the cloud solution. If, if, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, um, the whole story actually starts from the telemetries disseminated by the IoT sensors. Uh, in this case, we are actually getting uh, telemetries which are related to the vibration uh, 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 telemetry or the uh, uh, data point. And this is the key indicator for the developing variance in, in, in the rotating equipment or, or the motors, also the temperature and the current. Um, and then this information is fed to the solution that is deployed on the, uh, on the cloud, and then you have uh, different types of applications that, that, that are being used by different uh, types of roles, uh, you know, those different types of personnel who can actually gain some value out of uh, all the information that is being processed internally within the, uh, within the platform. Right. Okay, now coming to the native solution now, or on-prem solution. Now there could be possibilities, you guys must be thinking that if we have already uh, created the architecture and deployed the solution on the cloud, then what would be the need to develop a native solution? Now there could be possibilities uh, where um, you know the connectivity, connectivity to the internet is not always available because your solution or your robot or your devices might be deployed in a secure facility and the public ports are not open so that the information, so so in such situations the information cannot be shared on a public network which is the internet to, to the cloud. So in those situations it's, it's, it's important to have a solution that is running locally. And uh, it is somewhat related to the edge computing also, but edge computing actually relates to the solution that is deployed on a device itself. We do have such capabilities also, but in this specific webinar we are just going to be focusing on a solution that is deployed locally. Uh, which actually is uh, the MQTT broker, which is getting all the information from the sensors deployed locally, and this information is then related to a NoSQL database. And on top of that NoSQL database, we have uh, developed um, a mobile responsive uh, operational web UI that uh, shows uh, the, uh, the device telemetries, and it also has, um, you know, we have actually been able to integrate that with our BI dashboards also. Another value-added service that you can get out of this uh, solution is the ability of uh, getting the data out from, or, or getting a snapshot of the data, already processed data, and you can actually use that connector to uh, take a backup of uh, that data into cloud. Uh, DB or some, some other DB which is hosted outside, and you can then use this information which is already stays to train your machine learning models and, and improve your uh, reports and, and uh, AI predictions. So uh, 
as i mentioned before this operation web ui um, helps in device management it also helps in showcasing and presenting the time series plotting it also uh, has the capability of showing the ffp plotting which is uh, used to transform the time series symmetries into free, into the frequency domain and as i mentioned before we also have the capability of uh, backing this data up and then curating that for for machine learning purposes this application also has event management and notification alarms capabilities. Um, moving on. All right, so we go to the demo. This is the fun part. I'm going to be, uh, let me pull up that screen real quick. All right, so, this is the login screen of our native application. All right, so we have logged in. So this landing page here, you can actually select a uh, uh, manufacturing facility. I mean, this is some stock data that we have already uh, made available to showcase this demo. So I've uh, selected one of the uh, manufacturing facilities or plant. So here you are seeing um, the different devices that are available in this plant. I mean, if the plant has different sections, it shows that as well in the associated unit and the device health column also. Right now this value is actually coming in from a machine learning model that we have deployed as an API. But uh, in this webinar, I'm just going to be uh, showcasing the operational aspects of the application here. Uh, so if, as you can see, this, is, uh, this application is quite clean and uh, the, uh, the features that are available are quite self-explanatory. It's also quite, um, uh, what do you say? It's also interactive, as I mentioned before, and you can actually, we have actually provided some easy to use controls there as well, such as the uh, searching capabilities. For example, if you were to search for a device, let's say LK95, LK helps in the searching tag. You can also, if you can choose to download the schematic, you can do that in the CSV file. You can, you, we do have the printing facilities also. If you choose to hide a given column or a number of columns, you can to do so and we do have filters available here as well so for example if you can choose this specific device you can see this is a pill so this is another way of, of, of locating the device that you're interested in looking at the information so so if you if i were to yeah, right, so, so there you go so and you can actually use to, you, you can actually choose to uh, uh, sort the information as well. All right, so clicking on a specific device here. Here you can see uh, a snapshot uh, or the real-time integration with the with the BI report. On top, you you are seeing the different matrices here. So power loss here in in watt hours is like 53. The power consumed was 136, but the total power was like 189. So this was actually the power that was lost. Now, uh, this is another representation here in, in a pie chart, which is actually giving you the matrices in, in, in percentage points. And uh, the, the graphic down below is the amplitude by daytime and the vibration port. So this is actually a vibration uh, Inside, and you can see this, this this chart is pretty interactive. So it's actually the data is actually getting uh, loaded in uh, in real, near real time. So so if if I were to go back here, um, looking at the telemetries. So as I mentioned before, we are focusing on three types of telemetries here: temperature, current, and vibration. So let me click on that. So this is uh, the time series charting of the temperature signal that we are getting. And that does not change a lot because uh, 
because the temperature in, 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 in a normal situation does not oscillate a lot. Go back to telemetries, I can show you, show you the current telemetries also. Now this on top, you are seeing the time series plotting of the current signal. And down below is the FFT representation of the, the time series signals. So this is the frequency domain charting of the time, time series signaling. And for vibrations, we are using the frequency domain charting here, the FFT chartings. So another facility or functionality that is available uh, in this application is the ability to configure rules. So we do have a, a rule configure here, but you can actually edit that, delete that, you can add a rule here as well. So for example, you can create uh, the rule saying that temperature exceeds it's an end. You can choose a telemetry here. For now, we can choose temperature. The rule operator could be greater than or equal to, and you can say this is. This is the value. You can also specify the, the email, which is to which this notification is going to be sent. Configure rules also. This rule is not configured. Uh, by the way, we uh, uh, when we designed this application, that was that came in uh, because the requirement was to have a solution that can be deployed in a in in, in a facility that does not have access to the uh, public internet. So, but over the period of time, we started realizing that you know we need to design and develop this application in a way in which it becomes portable. So, uh, if if we can choose, we can actually choose to deploy that on Azure also. And uh, in, in in situations where uh, the, our, our customers are using um, other cloud services, uh, the competitive cloud services, we can actually uh, deploy this uh, application onto those platforms as well. So another thing that I would like to show you as part of this demo is the cloud part here. So this is, uh, this is basically a solution that is deployed on Azure. It's actually getting the telemetry information from IoT Hub, source from IoT Hub. And here you are actually seeing, uh, two, we have configured two devices right now. So if I were to click any one of those, let's say device one, you can see this telemetry information there. So this is already color coded. The, the graphs here are also quite um, interactive. And if you can choose to hide any one of those, uh, you can choose to do so. Uh, so currently, uh, so for, for the moment, we do have uh, those uh, telemetries coming in. So I mean, we've configured a device template. I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. So right now, we're getting information related to the current, the temperature, vibration on the x-axis, and the vibration on the y-axis as well. So if you can, if you want to create, or you need to introduce another device into the solution, you can actually choose to do so. We have, you can create a new, uh, device or template like that, you can actually choose telemetries and states and location and all that stuff. So it also has other things like you can actually set settings on top of that. You can put a label on the device devices. You can put some text properties there, the numbers, some related properties could be could be these also. And you can actually configure remote commands here as well. For example, uh, you can you can choose to. If, if the if the requirement is to control the fan speed, you can choose to configure the command remote commands here in the application itself. But in, as part of this demo, we have configured multiple rules here. So as the other application that I was showing you earlier, we can actually configure rules here as well in this application also. So you, you're seeing a temperature on it here. Uh, this uh, rule, if, if, if it were to fire, is going to be sending an email in this template. So if the root, for example, is if this is the condition, so the temperature exceeds this value, this is the alert that you're going to receive in an email. I'll show you an example of that also in a minute. And uh, we can also choose to integrate uh, such events with other business applications also. This specific rule when it, it's fired actually integrates with, with the NetSuite. Uh, and uh, we use Microsoft Flow uh, integration service that is available in Azure to perform the integration itself. And there is another rule here 
that we have configured also that is used to integrate this application with um, with Dynamics 365. Um, if I were to show you the how it looks like, let's say in Dynamics, I'll pull up the screen here in a minute. So this is the Dynamics UI. So if you were to go here, this is that, and go to Service Menu. The case is. Right, so we can choose to sort this. Like this. So I mean, you can, I mean, since we've been running it for a while, so you see that there are a number of alerts that have created in this application. We can click any one of those. And this is a, this is a, a, a case that is created inside Dynamics. And you can see the information here coming in from uh, our IoT solution here. So you can see the application name, which is Bolt Connect. You are also seeing the device name here. Uh, there is the rule name uh, that was violated. And as a consequence to that, we have this case created inside Dynamics 365. You all can also see the timestamp on which the rule was triggered. The value that was, uh, that, 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 that actually was responsible for the triggering of this event. Okay. And uh, then there are related uh, 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 work orders also that are created uh, inside uh, this application. I'll show you this real quick. This is a related work order that was created. So when this case was actually created by the IoT application in Dynamics, and you can see this same telemetry information here. Now this work order gets assigned to the field service agent. Now if this were to assign to any personnel, he can actually go and perform another table. So I'm going to show you a case that is created in NetSuite also in a minute. All right, so, so I mean, I, I can pick up any example here. So if you were to look in, into this one, to the file submenu here. So there you can see this application name which is Word Connect, the value, uh, the device information, the rule name. Also this is assigned to and the email uh, that is associated uh, with this case here and, and so on. So now that we have been able to get this information uh, into the business application uh, itself, we can actually let the ERP team uh, come in and they can also start building more value-added services on top of that. But as I was mentioning before, that the whole story actually starts with the insight that you get from the, the, the deployed sensor and then it gets processed and when it gets processed, it then gets integrated into an application like this and when it gets integrated into an application like this, it gets assigned to somebody. So the and the insight that you are getting from the machine itself becomes actionable, so it becomes operational, uh, essentially. So this is this is a, a means of us fulfilling uh, our our vision. I want to go back to the uh, presentation slide. Yes, this one. So 
that was uh, that about the demo itself, uh, where I was able to showcase the telemetry, info, the telemetry information that we're getting from the sensor. We were able to have this thing processed through the cloud solution, and eventually uh, having the cases uh, created inside the business applications like Dynamics and NetSuite. And once those cases are created, the idea is to have people dispatch and perform the their work. Um, so that's it as far as the demo is concerned. And I'm just going to let Olivia come in and uh, Great. tell a little bit about the future webinars. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> so just so everyone knows, this was our, uh, our showcase of our Bold Connect solution. Uh, we do have quite a few uh, IP solutions that we have built here at AlphaBold. Um, so over the next couple couple months, we'll be starting to roll those out, and uh, you'll be seeing some more information around them. Um, and we hope to see you there. I want to quickly jump into questions. Sam, if that's okay, if you can just jump to the next slide. Sure. So one of the questions that we had was, uh, what is the sample rate of the sensors? Uh, in this specific uh, use case that we uh, deployed uh, and that was actually running on the on the native solution, uh, we were actually getting the information at the click rate of four milliseconds. Okay. And the follow-up question was, how many types of sensors are available? I think we may have touched. On that yeah. One. So absolutely. So as I was mentioning before, uh, we do have uh, sensors available which are related to the temperature. Uh, and current and vibration. On top of that, uh, I, I mentioned the location sensor and the pressure sensor, uh, and also uh, uh, you know the pressure sensor as well that, that we're currently working on for the HPC uh, uh, use case. Okay. And then the other question was: Is there a liquid flow sensor? Uh, so I mean. Uh, so right now, I mean, we are not current, not working on that specific sensor for the moment. But you know, if uh, I were to go back to the vision itself, the idea is to have any sort of sensor that is available to be integrated with the solution, and then we can actually build insights on top of that. Okay, great. Um, and then the other question was: Are the sensors uh, wireless uh, or Bluetooth? So both varieties, I mean. Uh, it could be uh, Bluetooth, it could be uh, the uh, connected sensors as well. I mean, they, we are already working on use cases where we are working on detachable sensors that are disseminating information on the Bluetooth channel. Okay. And yeah, we can also follow up uh, separately regarding, you know, some of the items that we are working on as well as, you know, the roadmap that we have and and answer specific questions as it relates to that. And then another follow-up question just now is our samples time stamped at time of collection or time received? Uh, the time time received uh, per se. So, but I mean, since I mean, uh, so the, the the data that you're receiving in this use case, since we're actually receiving uh, this data at a much higher click rate. So, so even though it's the timestamp on the receiving side of it, but it's actually representative representative of the of the time in which the event has actually occurred. Okay, and actually, uh, really quick, everyone. So, Tyab wants to just quickly chime in. I'm going to see if I can just unmute him quickly. Give me one second. Ty, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, there you are. Awesome. So yeah, I just wanted to add in to uh, uh, what Olivia, you said and Sam, what you were saying. What's important is that there were some questions related to if we have a liquid flow sem uh, sensor, for example. Uh, so the idea of Bold Connect is to just showcase the capability that we have on the solutioning side of everything. We totally have the capability to work with you to find the right sensor 
that would allow us to be able to detect uh, the telemetry data that we need from any machinery, be it the flow of the liquid, be it the uh, geolocation. And we have a lot of demos that we have built as well. So we would love to have a follow-up discussion with you and understand uh, the actual problem uh, that we are trying to resolve because all these are the solution in itself has multiple modules and all those multiple modules they come together to eventually solve a problem and that's what we specialize in so we would love to work with you and see what kind of machinery you have how we can come up with a sensor if you don't have one because that's also an area in which we specialize uh, we have some scientists on the team as well who can help us with that and then we would be able to fabricate something and see on the economy of scale side of things before we actually get to the solutioning piece of it but the idea of Bolt Connect is the end-to-end -end solution and showcase the capability that we have in that area. So we definitely look forward to working with you if you have a more specific use case that we can work with you to resolve. Great, thanks, Tad. And I'm not sure if you caught the the, uh, the other follow-up question, but um, what is the size of the sensors? Yeah, again, the size uh, totally dependent upon the uh, how we need the sensor to be fitted. So there are lots of things that come into consideration when we start talking about the sensors. For example, whether the sensor needs to be a non-invasive sensor or can we just uh, make it part of the whole manufacturing process that you guys have. So it's definitely a discussion that we will need to have, but different sensors would have different sizes. If you're just trying to maybe uh, track your equipment, then you can have an RFID, for example, but you can also have a geolocator. Again, it depends upon whether it needs to be an active or an inactive sensor in that case. So we'll have to discuss with you in a bit more detail to understand the exact nature of the equipment to determine what size we would be using uh, for the sensor that you would deploy on the equipment. But it comes in varied sizes and different configurations. Uh, so we'll definitely be able to find a solution uh, for the problem that we have. Yeah, absolutely. I would just like to like comment here, picking back and off of what just what I have just mentioned here. So I mean, yes, it it all depends upon the uh, given use case and the and the requirement. So for example, if you're talking about the temperature telemetry, so even the temperature sensors are varied across different use cases. So for example, in some cases, if you need to be able to get the temperature reading of a liquid then you need a probe sensor there. That, that has a different, uh, it, it's, it's physically a different uh, uh, sensor type. Then, you know, if you were to see the, if you want to gauge the temperature of a room, for example, that's a different sensor altogether. Even though both of them are reading the temperature values, but the, but, but the way they are designed physically are, are completely different from each other. So again, as I mentioned before, it all depends upon the, the requirement per se. Okay. No questions? Uh, there was one more follow-up. So, how many sensors can the software accommodate? And what we can uh, do as well is we can we can follow up with you directly and, and schedule a call to to kind of go over all of it in more detail. But I don't know if that's something that Ty, you or Sam yeah. want to answer. Absolutely, I can respond to that. So, the the idea of using Microsoft Azure platform is definitely to be able to accommodate hundreds and thousands of sensors. And by the way, uh, from the security standpoint as well, there's a unique signature that gets registered on the platform so that there is no uh, other sensor or a sensor being hacked because you can imagine that as the sensor uh, sensors that are connected grow, then it can become a nightmare to manage all of them. So all of that mm -hmm. is already part of the Azure platform that we leveraged for our solution, Bolt Connect. So we will be able to connect as many sensors as you want onto that sensor. That's the piece of sensor connectivity. Now the piece that is equally important is there was a question on the sample rate of the data. So as you're processing that data and you have hundreds of sensors, then obviously you have to take into consideration what kind of telemetry data do we need to process? Because now you're talking about gigabytes of data or terabytes of data being generated every day. And that's again where our experience comes in we would work with you to figure out, so for example, let's say if we are tracking geolocation of an equipment, maybe just one telemetry information about the location every day at 8 a.m. is enough in your use case. Versus let's say if we are tracking temperature, maybe you want it to be sent uh, every hour. Versus if you're tracking vibration, like we talked about the sample rate there, because we want to be able to do fast Fourier transforms and you've got to be able to get to that 10th harmonic magic number, then you have to sample it in terms of milliseconds. 
So all of those things are totally dependent upon the use case. However, the framework as well as the solution, it is built so that it could support all those different scenarios. Yeah, just just one more point that I would like to add here is is the is the cost aspect of that as well. So the native solution that I was uh, demoing earlier also becomes important in situations where you have a, a high frequency data uh, or or on a higher sampling rate if the information is being disseminated on that. So so in, in if you were to like deploy a, a solution that is cloud hosted, then you know you're talking about a, a lot of cost that can be incurred based on the platform services that you use you, that you're using to process that information so in, in again as as Thayo was mentioning before it depends upon the situation and the requirement so if if we really need to like you know process that in, uh, level of that high load of information then it's probably uh, more prudent if you need to deploy that solution that is hosted locally rather than you need to host that on the cloud awesome thank you um, and then one more question from Aaron is, can we have a package including a laptop to act as a better data lodger mobile troubleshooting solution for each site? So Sam, I actually uh, assigned that one to you. I don't know if you can see it, but I know you can see it. Yeah, I can take uh, that question. Uh, okay. Yeah, the whole idea of a native solution is that definitely you can deploy it on a laptop. So you can have this deployed on a laptop that you have in your warehouse, in your production unit. You can have it deployed wherever you want. Uh, and it will still be able to connect to the cloud as well if you want that to happen. So the idea of having two solutions is based on our experience. We have learned that in some instances, you would want it deployed locally. And then in that case, you want all of the analytics uh, to be visible to you locally as well. So. If I've understood the question correctly, then the answer to that is yes, you can definitely deploy it and pack a package solution on your laptop. Yes, and you, the application is also portable. You, know, you can actually deploy that across different platforms. And again, the way this application is consumed is also already a mobile responsive UI that we designed for that. So you can actually have that a system deployed in a, in a warehouse facility or in a manufacturing facility, and you can actually see the analytics uh, and, and the UI of that on your tablet, on your phone, or on your on your local PC in your office as well. Great, a lot of good questions, guys. Do you have any more? Is there anything else we can help answer right now? I think I covered all the ones that we had. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll we'll follow up with you individually. Where we we'd love to get your feedback. Also. Uh, there's been a lot of great conversation here, so I think um, you know it'd be good to schedule a call to discuss in, in more detail if that's something you might be interested in. Um, but I want to thank everyone for joining. We have about six minutes left, so we'll go ahead and just wrap up here. Um, Sam, thank you so much for the presentation, and Taya, appreciate you jumping in there. We will be in touch, and look out for our future webinars, and thanks for attending again. Have a good one.